before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Second Epistle of Paul the Apostle to Timothy. Second Timothy 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee. And the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion." And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Salute Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Do thy diligence to come before winter. Eubulus greeteth thee, and Pudens, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. The Epistle of Paul the Apostle to Titus. Titus 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, 
But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. Where the needle goes, the thread follows. The GCK needle goes across the globe with the unending thread of Christ Jesus, sowing salvation, transformation, peace, and goodwill toward all. But wait, Christ our advocate is not done yet. On earth, in any nation, anywhere, everywhere, there is no other advocate except Jesus Christ. Advocate. From after November comes December. Tis the season of joy unspeakable, the season of Emmanuel, God with us. Live at the GCK Emmanuel Ground, DLICC, kilometer 42, Lagos Ibado Expressway, December 21 to December 26, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily. It's a double dose. GCK and the December retreats. For the youths globally, will be super scintillating as teenagers, campus students, core members, and young adults will experience renewal for rising young egos on Tuesday, December 26, 2023. GCK Emmanuel will be broadcast live to the world via satellite and all our social media platforms. God's servant, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, is set to minister live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Along with Cole Hasty, an American gospel artist, to minister in songs, tell everyone, everywhere, this December 2023. GCK Emmanuel is here. GCK. The gospel to every creature.
Does your love to him bring true? And your life and service to Then the world see Jesus in you. Can the world see Jesus in me? Can the world see Jesus in you? Does your love to him bring true? We now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
get by on my own. Now I know I just can't take it anymore. So we can move on from Benjamin, I'm begging you, please help me. So So divine since I found the Lord. I found happiness. I found peace of mind. I found the joy of living by friends. Loss of life. I found real contentment. I'll be living in a void. I found happiness all the time. Wonderful peace of mind. Yes, he's...
Christ abides day by day as the shepherd tree, and he seeks for the sheep down astray. Just turn to him, you weary one, while he's calling you, and rejoice as you walk in his way. This is where it all started. In the Bible, those who came to a place like this, they pleaded and they begged that they must take something home. It has never changed and will never change. The Lord will do for us what he intends to do. As we're studying the word, taking the word, believe the word, and purposefully live in the word. It's like the air you breathe. It comes once every week and it's just for you. It's the Monday Bible study where the undiluted word of God is served precept by precept and line upon line. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths what is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls but the search will not walk therein you say you are born again you say you are a child of god you say you are connected to christ you say you are converted you say you're on your way to heaven all right now as for the old way as for the old path wherever you are online or physical every monday Presents a personal gift for you, the expository word of God. Simple, full, and free. This is the Spirit of God bearing witness in your heart that the grace of God has come to you. And that grace that appeared to you brought salvation. And it teaches you to deny all ungodliness and worldly laws. And it's helping you, the grace of God helping you to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Monday Bible Study with Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. 1800 hours GMT, the teacher of the word, gifted by heaven, with a fivefold ministry, God's servant, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, awaits you. Join us. Don't forget, it's every Monday, and it's specially just for you. Father, we thank you for the worship service. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for the light, illumination you give in your word every time. We're asking, Lord, that your word today will penetrate every heart, every life, and make us to see what you have for us in your word in Jesus' name. The power, the grace, the strength, the 
ability, the energy, spiritual energy to go forth and be and do what you want of us. Fulfill in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Matthew chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 9. Matthew 11. Reading from verse 9. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea. I say unto you, and more than a prophet, look at verse 10, for this is he of whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Then in verse 11, it says, verily, truly, I say, unto you among them that are born of women there has not risen a greater than john the baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he that jesus talking and he's talking about john so you have John, and then you have Jesus. There's another word that qualifies John. In Mark chapter 6, verse 20. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man. A just man. An unholy. And he observed him. And when he heard him, when Herod heard John, he had him gladly, and he did many things. John, the just, justified by Jesus. That's what we're looking at today, John. John the Baptist, the just, justified by Jesus. Jesus. In John chapter 5, reading from verse 33, John 5, verse 33, he said unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. Verse 35, it says, he, John, was a burning and shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. That's still Jesus justifying, recognizing John the Baptist. The topic we're dealing with today, John the just, justified by Jesus. We we'll divide to three points today. Number one, the recognition of John the Baptist. Number two, the revelation of Jesus the bridegroom. Number three, the restoration for the just of the just by the just for all believers. Look at number one, the recognition of John the Baptist. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the man. Number two, the minister. Number three, the messenger. Number one, the man announced by an angel. Number two, the minister appointed as an ambassador. Number three, the messenger approved with all authority. Look at John. As he was announced, even before his birth, by an angel. We're looking at number one, the man announced by an angel. Luke chapter one, reading from verse 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. Your prayer is heard. And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. 
the angel announced and the angel even gave the name and he said elizabeth your wife will have a son not a girl a son not just a child a son the angel was definite and specific and then he said the name will be called john look at verse 16 as the angel continued to describe what john will look like and many of the children of israel shall he turn to the lord their god and then in verse 17 he says and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of elijah elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The angel made the name known, made his ministry known, and made the manifestation of the glory of God through his life, the grace of God through his life, make that known. It's the fulfillment of Malachi. Look at Malachi chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 5. Malachi chapter 4. We're looking at verse 5. It says, Behold, I send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. In verse 6, this is what he will do. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's the prophecy the angel was referring to. He was to be a man, a man of character, a man of conviction, a man of courage, a man that will declare the coming of the Lord. Look at number two here. Number two is a minister appointed as an ambassador. A minister appointed as an ambassador in Matthew chapter 11 reading from verse 13 for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John and then in verse 14 it tells us it says and ye and if ye will receive it this is Elias which was for to come Jesus said of John that if the Jews, the Israelites, the people of Jerusalem, if they will receive this, this, this John, John the Baptist, is Elias, which was to come. And look at verse chapter 17 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 17, reading from verse 10. And his disciple asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes, that Elias must first come. In verse 11, Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Remember, here is the minister. What's his ministry? When he comes, he will restore all things. He will point to Christ. He will identify Christ. He will lift up Christ, whose ministry and sacrifice will be to restore all things that were lost in Adam. And then in verse 12, Jesus, and I say unto you that Elias is come already. Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but they have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them. The interpretation now in verse 13. In verse 13, then the disciples understood that he spake of, unto them of John the Baptist. The one to come, the minister to come to restore all things an ambassador he came ahead of time so that he will point christ unto them second corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 18 who is an ambassador 
what does an ambassador do? You? And what's the ministry of the ambassador? We're looking at Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, and all things of God. And has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given him and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation verse 19 in verse 19 to we that is to say that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us like he committed unto John the word of reconciliation verse 20 now in verse 20 we then now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as do God beseech you by us. We pray you, in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. John, an ambassador, was to turn the heart of the children of Israel to the Father God in heaven, and then to turn the hearts of the children on to their father. He was to have the ministry of an ambassador. Number three is the messenger approved with all authority. A messenger approved with all authority. It tells us in Matthew chapter 11 verse 10, for this is he, Christ, the Lord, Savior, Jesus pointed out about John. He said, This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send you my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. In verse 11, which we have read, let's read that again. Verily I say unto you, Here is Christ the Messiah, approving of John the messenger he says verily I say unto you among them that are born of women he has not risen a greater than John the Baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he amen and we as children of God as children of the kingdom we have the privilege, we have the promise, we have the possession, we have everything that can make us demonstrate the goodness of God more than John the Baptist. In Luke chapter 7, reading from verse 28, Luke chapter 7, reading from verse 28, for I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. We go to point number two now. Point number two is the revelation of Jesus, the bridegroom. The revelation of Jesus, the bridegroom, Christ the Lord, Christ our Savior, Christ our shepherd, Christ our sanctifier, Christ the final sacrifice, Christ our substitute is also referred to as the bridegroom, as the husband of the church, as the bridegroom of the bride. In John chapter 3 verse 27, John 3 verse 27, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Verse 28, it says, Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. In verse 29, it tells us, He that has the bride is the bridegroom. It's referring to Christ. He said Christ is the head of the church, is the savior of the body, is the bridegroom of the bride, is the one that takes care 
of the children of God. He says, he that has the bride, not him, not me, not you, but Christ that has the bride is the bridegroom. But the French of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. A perch from him, a perch his voice, the voice of the Savior, the voice of the bridegroom. And because of that, my joy is fulfilled. Look at verse 30. It says in verse 30, he must increase, but I must decrease. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 4. In Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. You know the story. John had sent two of his disciples to Christ and has asked the question, Are you the one to come or do we look for another? And Jesus, in answering that question, said, Go back to him and show him the things which he does hear and see. What did they hear? What did they see? Look at verse 5. In verse 5, the blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the dead hear, and the dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached unto them. The Lord was referring to all the prophecies that are said about the Messiah when the Messiah comes. That the Messiah, in Isaiah chapter 35, he'll make the blind to see. He'll make the lame to walk. He'll perform miracles that had never been performed. The lepers had never been cleansed. The lepers will be cleansed. The dead were here. Even the dead will rise up and the poor will have the gospel preached unto them. And then in verse 6, it says, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. The revelation of Jesus the bridegroom. Three things. Number one, the things which ye hear and see. The things which ye hear and see. Number two, the truth which you hold and stand for. The truth which you hold and stand for. Number three, the treasure which we have in salvation. The treasure which we have in salvation. All talking about Jesus. What we see coming from Jesus. What we hear coming from Jesus. What we hold, the truth coming from Jesus. What we stand for coming from Jesus. And the treasure coming from Jesus. What we have in the Savior. All coming from Jesus. Look at number one. The things which ye do hear and see. Look at that verse 4 again. Matthew chapter 11. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John those things which you do hear and see. Why? To remove his unbelief. To remove his doubt. To make him understand and appreciate the revelation of Christ. Are you the one to come? Do we look for another? Here is the evidence I am the one to come. Here is the evidence that you don't need to look for another. Go and show him what you hear and what you see. What are the miracles? What are they? Signs and wonders. What are they? What did they hear? The message of the gospel of the kingdom. And what did they see? 
what they had never seen in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament. Go show him what you hear, what you see. How do we help people today? How do we remove the doubts of people today? How do we make people to understand that the only one that can save the Savior, the Redeemer, that is Jesus Christ, we don't need to look for another. We show them what we hear and what we see. The testimonies of changed lives, the testimonies of healed diseases, and the testimony of the dead being raised, the testimony of blind eyes opening, the testimony of the deaf hearing to take away their doubt and to make them see that Christ is the one that can solve their problem. We go to show them the things we hear and see. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 22, talking about Christ, talking about what he did, and we now taking that message out, what we see and what we hear. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. That's what we show them. That's what we reveal to them. We hear it, repeat it, and we see it. Tell them so that they will know that this Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is still Savior, is still healer, is still redeemer, is still a deliverer, and is still the one that brings signs and wonders into our lives. Acts chapter 4, verse 16. In Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 16, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle has been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it. They saw it, they heard of it and we are seeing and we are hearing and what shall we do unto this man? We cannot do anything to them. The Lord has sent them to show and to reveal what we're hearing and what we're seeing. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, so then when the Adfather threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing, how they might punish them because of the people for all men glorified God. Why? They saw, they heard, and because of the things they heard and what they saw, all men glorified God. And then it says, for that which was done, verse 22, in verse 22, for the man was about 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shown. Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 37, it says, And were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has done all things well. We've seen it. We've heard of everything that He did, and we can testify, He has done all things well. He maketh both the dead to hear and the dumb to speak. The things which ye hear and see, ye, you. Have you seen anything? Have you heard any testimony? Have you, have you known anything that God has done in this our day, in this our generation? Did you hear? Did you see? Has your neighbor been touched and transformed? Have you seen anyone having salvation with a change of life? Have you seen anyone getting healed instantaneously, miraculously? Have you seen the power of God in manifestation? Then go and show John 
Go and show doubters. Go and show those who are confused. Go and show your neighbors what should you hear and see. Let's look at number two. Number two, the truth which you hold and stand for. What do we know of Christ? He came to reveal the truth. For this purpose came I into the world, that I might reveal or show the truth unto the world. And the truth he has given us. And the truth will see of him. And the truth will know of him. The truth which you hold and stand for. Go and tell others. Matthew chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 22, verse 16. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herod Herodians, saying, Master, teacher, we know that thou art truth. We know if you know that, tell your neighbors. If you know that, tell your friends. If you know that, tell your co-tenant. If you know that, tell all the people around us. We know that thou art true. If you know that, don't waver. If you know that, don't shake. If you know that, don't change. We know that thou art true. The true Savior, we know. The true sanctifier, we know. The true redeemer, we know. The true healer, we know. The true Lord and the true king, we know. We know that thou art true. Well, the truth we hold and the truth we stand for and that thou teachest the way of God in truth. Thou teachest the way of God, the way of salvation in truth. Thou teachest the way to heaven in truth. Thou teachest the way of life in truth. Thou teachest the way that will take us away from death and bring us to eternal life. You teach the way of God in truth. If you know that, like they knew that, believe that, accept that, embrace that, experience that in your heart, in your life, that you know that Jesus Christ teaches the way of God in truth. Now, if you have a book that contains information and instruction, enlightenment that will make your life straight, make your life upright, and make your life fulfilled, and make your life joyful, and make your life successful, if you have that book, but you never read the book. Somebody mentioned the title of the book, and you say, I have that. I have that. And then the fellow describes, and he says, you know that book, the content of that book will lift up your life, will change your life, will transform your life. You say, I sure know that. But the final question that blows you up, have you read it? Have you taken the instruction in that book? Have you lived by the principles revealed in that book? Then you say, you are sorry you are reading all that thing, but you have not read that particular one. Why do you major or minor? And then the major book in your life that tells about the transformation and the upliftment in your life. You are neglecting that. Well, if we know that Christ shows the way in truth, and all that is showed, you will not find in any other book. It's in the Bible. It's in the New Covenant. It's in the New Testament. What he has done and what he has provided and the power that he can manifest in your life, the way of life and the way of truth. And he shows that to us. Why don't you read the book? Why don't you know and understand and embrace and experience what he has revealed? He said, thou teachest the way of God in truth, neither carest thou for any man. Neither carest thou for any man. 
as you look at you know people personalities in the world they have what they want to say they know what they ought to say they know the revelation they ought to reveal but fear intimidation and the fear of consequence will not allow them to reveal but you know christ he came for the truth and the father god in heaven said i will put my word in his mouth and he came to the world and the pharisees and the sadducees were there they didn't accept they didn't appreciate healing the sick on the sabbath day he did it anyway because he cared not for man they asked him a question he knew the answer they wanted are you the son of god they wanted to accuse him they wanted to kill him even for that he had said i and my father are one he had said before abraham was i am and they were after him in a conspiracy to cut, uh, to cut his life short and now they brought him to the council for judgment and the high priest said now all these people have been telling this and telling that but we want to hear from you are you the one are you the man are you the christ are you the messiah he said very late very late i tell you that ye will see me the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven and his only angels with him he cared for no man cared for no man even though those persecutors were there and those injurious people were there yet he still told the truth and then they were taking him and they took him to the cross and they nailed him to the cross and those people jeered and they sneered and they looked at him hey christ messiah if you are the christ come down from the cross and we will believe you he cared not for any of the things they said because he knew he came so that he will die for the salvation of the whole of humanity now when you have a savior like that a messiah like that and you have a redeemer like that that did not care for any man that he told the truth he died for that truth he emphasized that truth you will believe that truth you will embrace the truth for thou regardest not the person of man thou regardest not the person of man the high priest dressed in his regalia with all authority he didn't regard the dress the stature the position of that high priest and then the soldiers came up and he came in their full roman uniform he regarded not the person of any man and the people uh, even on the cross the other thief was saying ah, if you are the christ then uh, you will save us from this and he kept quiet all their persecution all their insult on their assault all their everything he regarded not man because he came to show us the truth he came to reveal the truth and he told them go show john the things which thou hast heard and seen and also tell him and I'm to tell you, and you are to tell people around you the truth which you hold and stand for. You hold the truth. You'll embrace the truth. And you will stand for the truth anywhere you are in Jesus' name. You'll not regard the stature of men, the actions of men, and the persecution from men. But in Proverbs chapter 23, reading from verse 23. Proverbs 
23, verse 23, by the truth and sell it not. By the truth and sell it not. Buy, buy. You can buy a book containing the truth, but you have not bought the truth. You can buy a bed that will give you rest and peace in sleep, but you have not bought sleep. You can buy food and even prepare the food, but you have not actually bought and got the food until the food enters into you. Buy the truth. Money buys the Bible. The Bible contains the truth. Money buys all the revelation that we have of the Lord Jesus Christ and the truth that he revealed. But even though you bought the book containing the truth, all the truth, all the revelation of Christ, you have not bought the truth yet into your heart. How do you buy? You read. How do you buy? You discover. How do you buy? You consecrate. How do you buy? You give your life to that truth, whatever the cost. Whoever accepts, whoever does not accept, whoever supports, whoever may oppose you, you buy the truth. You buy the truth with your decision to read, your devotion in consecration, and you buy the truth with the surrender of your heart and your life unto the truth of the word of God. How many times we come here and we say, if you can recite the memory verse, raise up your hand and stand up. You have bought the, the scripture booklet. You have it in your hand. Maybe you even have more than one copy. The only thing is you have not read, you have not memorized, you have not taken in you have not analyzed, you have not meditated on the truth of that memory verse. And then, although you have the scripture booklet, what's the message today? And what's the topic today? And you are asking your neighbor, even after the teacher has announced it, what did they say? Ah, but you had it at home now. Why didn't you read it at home? You bought it already, but you have not bought it in reality. It is when you read it, it is when you commit your life to it, it is when you live by it, it is when you have conviction concerning it, you have bought the truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. Be a man, a woman, a believer of conviction that I have got this and nothing will take it away from my hand. Also, wisdom is in the book, and instruction is in the book, and understanding is in the book. Buy it with your prayers on your knees. Buy it with meditation. Buy it with consecration. Buy it with obedience. Buy it until it becomes part of your blood, part of your heart, part of your life, and part of your movement here on earth. The truth which ye hold and stand for look at number three number three is the treasure which we have in salvation the treasure which we have in salvation go show john go show your master go show your leader go show your neighbor go and show the people around you why you are confident and why you are standing where you stand, what you hear, what you see, what you hold, what you stand for, what you have in salvation. Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, I'm reading here from verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? He has delivered us the treasure we have, the treasure we possess in salvation. 
but many people do not know and yet it's in our bible it says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son there's a present kingdom there's a powerful kingdom there's a possessed kingdom and he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son how and when did that happen look at verse 14 in verse 14 in whom we have redemption we have already at the present time we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins we've got that already it is not something we're pursuing it's not something we're searching for we have christ we have salvation we have christ we have redemption we have christ we have forgiveness we have christ and we have freedom we have christ and we have salvation and the blessings in salvation in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins look at verse 27 in verse 27 whom to whom god will make known what is the riches of the glory of the of this mystery among the gentiles which is this what we have which is this what we possess which is this is what we have experienced which is christ in you the hope of glory we have that christ in you the hope of glory the treasure which we have in salvation second corinthians chapter 3 we're looking at verse 18 second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we all but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord but we all, all in the family of God, but we all, all in the church of the living God, but we all, all in the kingdom of his dear son, but we all with open face beholding us in a glass. There is the mirror available for everyone in the family. But there are members of the family, they're too uh, horrid, and they're too much in a haze to go to the mirror. And because of that, they go out, you don't see the cleanliness, and you don't see the perfection, you don't see the beauty that you ought to see. All the things they need are back at home. The mirror is there. The water is there. The sponge is there. The soap is there. All the cleansing agents are there. But they don't have time to look at the mirror and see how they are. They're too much in a hurry to go out. They do not make themselves the way they ought to be. What I'm saying is the glass, the mirror, the Bible, the Word is there. It's available for everyone in the family of God. But some of us are too much in a hurry to go to work, to resume early, to catch the bus, and to make the appointment. And because of that, we hurry, 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 and we do not have time to look at the mirror and to look at the glass every time. If we look at the mirror every time, we will see Jesus and then as we see Jesus he will tell you 
I am the way I am, so I can make you the way you ought to be. And as you look at the mirror and you see that things are not too fully and completely all right, then the soap is there, the water is there, the provisions are there to wash you and to cleanse you and to purge you. And when you have cleaned yourself with the water, with the water of the world and with prayer and with supplication, you go back to the mirror. Am I all right yet? And as you see more of Jesus, more of his glory and more of his life, you are able to go back to the mirror and see and see. And now a time comes, you look at the mirror. Yes, you see Jesus, but as you stand before the mirror, you see yourself. And the picture you see is like the picture of Jesus you have seen in the mirror but you must make use of the glass look at that again but we all with open face open heart a willing heart and open to any correction from the mirror open to any cleansing that the mirror will direct us to cleanse open to everything the mirror will reveal we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord we behold the glory of the lord the goodness of the lord the grace of the lord the life in christ we behold the manifestation of who christ is beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord as we behold and behold and behold, we are changed into the same image. We are changed in the same image. The mirror is not distorted, but the mirror reveals to us what we are. It shows us the difference between us and the glory of Christ we see in the glass. And then we look at the provision of Calvary and we're changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. In Second Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him, him, him that has called us to glory and virtue. He has called us in the mind of Christ, in the plan of Christ, in the devotion of Christ as he calls us out of darkness into the light as he calls us out of our past into a glorious present as he calls us out of what we were in Adam and he calls us into who he is the last Adam he calls us to glory and to virtue now if we didn't know that when we do anything ignominious anything shameful we'll say I'm not surprised that's who I am that's what I've always been but I thank God for his grace he called me by grace into the kingdom. But this is who I am. I have now accepted myself. I love myself the way I am because that is who I am. I'm not going to have hypertension because, you know, I'm worried, I'm bothered. I'm like this, I'm not like that. So I accept. You accept too soon. Because he called you, and he called you to glory, not to degradation. He called you to glory, not to imperfection. He called you to glory. He didn't call you to shameful acts and shameful life. He called you to glory, not to deficiency. He said, we are changed 
from glory to glory and then now we have the glory of the Lord and he has called us he has called me I said he has called me to glory and to virtue if my life is not virtuous today more than it was yesterday I am missing something if my life is not more glorious today than it was last year, I am missing something. If I do not have more of the light and more of the grace and more of the shining pattern of Christ in my life this year than I had last year, I am missing something. He has called us to glory and virtue. Look at verse 4 there. It says in verse 4, whereby are given unto us. Whereby are given unto us. Have you had the experience of somebody giving you women? They give you a good shirt. Good. Better than even the shirts you are wearing and you accepted that gift, you appreciate that gift, the only thing is that you hang it on the shelf, you have never worn it for one day you have it, but you don't use it and there are things who have been given somebody give you a very costly writing material, a pen but the point, you still have it, you have not lost it. All you did is to wrap it in a napkin like that, slothful servant, and you kept it. Do you remember the pen we sent you? Yes, I do. Have you lost it? No. How can I lose a precious, costly gift like that? I still have it. Have you started using it? Don't let me ask your question so I don't discourage you. Tell me, really, I'm planning to. We have it, we have not started using it. Somebody bought you a good car. And the key is in your hand. Have you started using it? You don't even know how to drive. And because you don't know how to drive, that gift that was given you is almost like useless. You pack it there, and the thing is going to run down before you learn how to drive and before you use it. The point is that Lord has given unto us exceeding and great precious promises, but we hang the promises on the shelf. We keep the promises in the drawer. We keep all those things, and we never get to using them. If you had used everything you have heard from all these global crusades, if you had used everything you have heard in all these uh, services, if you had used all the promises, all the provision, and everything that Lord has prepared for us and given us until this time, since how many years have you been here now? 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. If you have used everything, uh, will be higher than where we are now. I'll start using them. I will start using them. It says, whereby a giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature. Now understand that the depraved nature on the one hand and the divine nature on the other hand. The divine nature, never tired, never weak, never subdued, never submerged by any sin, personalities and powers in the world. The divine nature, never stained by the sins of society. The divine nature on the one hand, but there's the depraved nature on the other hand is the nature of Adam. 
is the nature of giving excuses is the nature of crawling instead of soaring is the nature of confusion and unbelief the depraved nature where do you lean honestly do you lean more to the depraved nature the patient discouraged doubting low and crying and all these years he has given you the divine nature why don't you wake up and say what am i doing where am i how am i living why am i doubting he has given me the divine nature and i lean too much near the depraved nature whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature somebody say amen, amen. having a sketch having a sketch having a sketch i'm sure you know there are believers they are saved there's no doubt they love the bible there is no doubt the good members of a church like this no doubt the problem is they always say to themselves i have problems i never escape the pressure of the world is on me i never escape i pray i never escape they're not speaking the language of the kingdom because they do not understand the provision of the kingdom if they knew the provision of the kingdom and they spoke the language of the kingdom they will know we have escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss i have escaped i have escaped what you say is what you see what you believe in your heart is what you possess what you confess is what claims your life if you're always going around they're yeah, after me i'm always in trouble i'm always tired i'm almost almost, almost weak and i'm deficient i am nothing you think that is humility i am nothing i am nothing i am nothing what you confess is what will become but when you understand christ died for me and christ pulled me out and he has taken me out of the kingdom of darkness he has brought me into the kingdom of his dear son i am made for glory i am made for virtue and i escape the corruption in the world what you say is what you will see in your life amen and when i see you tomorrow You'll be brighter than you are today. Your life will be richer than it is today in Jesus' name. Let's come now to point number three. Point number three, the restoration by the just for all believers. The restoration by the just for all believers christ is the just one and as you look at acts chapter 3 reading from verse 14 acts chapter 3 reading from verse 14 but she denied the holy one and the just that's talking about jesus and desired a murderer to be granted unto you verse 15 it says and killed the prince of life whom god has raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses look at verse 16 it says and his name 
through faith in his name has made this man strong. Faith in the name will make you strong. Strong. Stronger than before. Stronger than your enemies. Stronger than your challenges. Has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. He is the just, the just one. What's he to do? Look at verse 20 there. In verse 20, and he shall send Jesus which before was preached unto you. Verse 21, it says, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration. That word restitution there means restoration. Until the times of restoration of all things. Restoration. Restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. His holy prophets since the world began. Everything spoken by the mouth of the holy prophets. Think about Moses, all those promises he gave.